What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to do something completely outside of the norm of what you would probably expect me to do normally, and that is I'm going to install this Traxxas long arm lift kit onto a TRX4 Sport. Now if you've watched videos I've done in the past, you'll probably know that lift kits are the opposite of anything I would normally recommend. While I do like portal axles, I like them in rigs that are low slung with the as low as possible center of gravity still taking advantage of that high clearance portal axle design. The lift kit does the opposite. It takes and just raises your center of gravity. Everything that's attached to the chassis gets higher and in general the performance of a lift kit really isn't going to benefit this type of truck for the type of running that I would do, which would be rock crawling and trailing. However, that's not to say that a lift kit doesn't have advantages in certain circumstances. If you're looking at areas with extreme breakovers, but that aren't very tall, okay, probably going to be useful there. And in the mud, it could possibly be useful if you're trying to add some clearance for the bigger tires and things like that. The Traxxas lift kit says that it adds over an inch of ground clearance if you're using the optional 2.2 wheels. The TRX4 Sport and all of the TRX4s come with 1.9 tires. I decided while installing the Traxxas long arm lift kit, I'm going to add the J Concepts 2.6 inch Fling King wheels and tire setup. So the outcome of tonight's install is basically going to be converting this TRX4 Sport to a mega mud truck. These J Concepts Fling King tires are insanely aggressive and super tall. Overall, it's going to add a huge amount of clearance to this TRX4. This is the only situation you will ever find me installing a lift kit. And that's just because overall, this is just meant to be ridiculous. This Traxxas long arm lift kit is not cheap, but it does come with a number of parts in it to try and justify that cost. It comes with a drop down bracket for your servo, drag link and pan hard mount. It comes with all new shocks and springs. It comes with new longer suspension links, new drive shaft pieces to extend them to the length that they need to be now. And if you're running one of the other versions of this kit, it comes with longer T-lock cables to get you running with those selectable lockers again. But since we're running the Sport, we're not gonna have to install these. However, if you do have one of the other versions of the TRX4, I did do a video tearing down the Traxxas axles and showing how these cables were installed and removed so if you need help getting those set back up, check out that video. I'll link it in the description below. With all those parts covered, now let's jump into the installation of the lift kit onto this TRX4 Sport. Before really digging into the truck, I've gone through and separated all the suspension links, put them aside in the order that I know that they go as far as uppers and lower links, front and rear. Also, I am using the TRX4 Sport, which is the short wheelbase, the 12.3 inch wheelbase of this kit. Now. If you have a Defender or Tactical and you have the 12.7 inch wheelbase, you actually have to disassemble these links and swap on the longer rod ends that are included with the lift kit. But for me, since I'm using the short one, the rod ends that I need are already installed on the links. After that, the next thing I need to do is assemble the new GTS shocks that come with the lift kit. So we're gonna set the TRX4 aside and get those filled with shock oil, bled and the springs mounted before we start working on the truck itself. The shocks included with this lift kit come completely empty. So you actually will need to fill these yourself. You'll need to twist off that top cap and then begin to fill them with shock oil. Now the kit includes the shock oil for these, but it is a lighter fluid. I'm guessing maybe around a 30 or so. I'm going to use a little bit heavier fluid at a 45 that I have handy. Since I'm gonna do a mud truck, I want this thing to be a little bit slower on the suspension rather than having the axles move around too much. So with the shock shafts pulled all the way out, I'm gonna to begin to fill these shocks. Fill the shock body until it's maybe 10 millimeters from the top of the body and just cycle the shock shaft slowly to make sure that all of the air bubbles come out of the body. Now going by the instruction manual included with this kit, it says to fill these shocks until about a quarter inch from the top when the shock is completely compressed. With the shaft fully compressed, we're now going to reinstall that top cap. Now we need to repeat those steps for the remaining three shocks. Now with all four of the shocks filled with oil, we're going to install the springs and lower spring cups. 
The manual specifies a certain amount of preload to be done on each shock. I'm gonna kind of put an arbitrary amount in there for now until I get it in the vehicle. Then I'm gonna set the preload myself. Now we've got all four shocks assembled. We can grab the TRX-4 and start doing some disassembly. Before we really even jump into this, I'm gonna remove all four wheels and tires just to get them out of the way. Now with the wheels and tires all out of the way, we can remove the front and rear drive shafts. With the drive shafts removed, now I'm going to go to removing the link mounts and shock mounts from the chassis side of the truck. Since I don't have the T-locks in these axles, I don't have to worry about disconnecting the cables. After removing the front axle, we'll do the exact same for the rear axle. With the axles completely removed from the chassis, we can set this aside. At this point, we do need to remove the rest of the links and shocks from these axles as well. With those factory links and shocks removed, we can now replace them with the new links and shocks from the lift kit. Make sure to confirm that you have the right links for the right positions on the axles because there is slight differences to the rod ends on each side of the link for upper links versus lower links, for example. We've got all the new links and shocks installed on the rear axle. Now we need to cover the front axle. You can see the massive difference in overall length of these new lift kit shocks versus those stock shocks. It looks like we're getting at least three quarters of an inch of gain just out of the shocks themselves. Again, this is definitely not a practice you would normally find me preaching. And now the front axle is done with the new shocks and links as well. Now, contrary to the manual, I am not going to reinstall the axles under the chassis just yet. Instead, I'm going to install that front servo relocation bracket before I put the axle axles underneath the truck. I think it's just going to be easier to work with this without all of the axles underneath of it. We need to remove a lot of screws just to be able to get this chassis loosened up enough to separate that bracket. Now with all those screws removed, I can pry the chassis apart enough to get this thing out of position. So I first removed the servo horn, then passed the servo through the mount from the top so that I didn't have to disconnect the servo from inside the receiver box. This is just a shortcut. Make sure that you know the exact position of your servo horn though, so that you don't have to do any recentering. I just put it to the 90 degree position from the body of the servo, and then I'm going to reattach it. With the servo back in position, I'm going to install all four of the servo mounting screws again. With the servo installed back into the servo mount, I'm going to place the servo mount into the chassis. Before reinstalling the screws, I'm going to remove the panhard link from the stock shock tower. With the new servo mount in place, you can see that the stock panhard link mount fits right into a little groove on that to just help tie everything together a little bit more, keep everything in place. Even though the instructions are built for the model that has the fender wells, using this style with the standalone shock towers works just the same. I'm gonna reinstall the panhard link into that new relocated drop down position. Now it's time to reinstall the axles into this chassis. install this 20 millimeter screw through the original pan hard mount and into the drop down one just to brace everything to the chassis. With the front axle under the build, now it's time to install the rear axle. Now the shocks and links are installed and we clearly have a huge lift on this car. That is even more than I was expecting and pretty outrageous looking at this point. Now the very last step to this is replacing some of those drive shaft pieces from the drive shafts that we removed earlier. Since we have a lot more distance between our axles and the transmission now, we need to make sure that we replace those to get more engagement on our drive shaft. So the front drive shaft is our shorter drive shaft. We need to take this apart and then disassemble the joints by removing the screw that is down inside of the half shaft. 
the length of these half shafts is indicated by small dots molded onto the very end of these half shafts. Now the front half shaft says to install it with a short and a medium. Now the stock configuration is two shorts. So you really only need to disassemble one side and then replace one of the other sides with a medium. And the medium is indicated by having a small dot on each side, 180 degrees from each other. Now for the rear drive shaft. Looking at this in the stock configuration, I can tell that this is a medium side and a short side. The short wheelbase version of the truck that I have says that it needs a medium side and a long side. So I'm gonna leave the slightly longer version that I've got here in the stock configuration in place and I'm just going to disassemble the short side of this drive shaft. The long piece that I need is indicated by having three dots, 90 degrees from each other and then one side is blank at the 90 degree position. When reinstalling your drive shafts, make sure that you line up the small notch on the end of the drive shaft with both sides. This will make sure that the joints at each end of the shaft are spinning together and not adding a bunch of vibration to your drivetrain. If you've got these installed at an angle to each other, you will end up with a lot of vibration, especially with a lift kit when you're exaggerating those drive shaft angles. So now we've got both the front and rear drive shafts built. Let's get them reinstalled into the rig. So now at this point, our truck is back and ready to go again. Now the lift kit does also come with a new pinion gear and that is in case you're going to run the larger tires and need to re-gear your truck to handle that type of power. Now I am not going to do that even though I'm going to put much larger tires on that because I am actually going to change out this entire motor and ESC system in a couple of weeks. Now even though I have no intentions of reusing them I'm going to throw the stock tires and wheels back on this and put the body on just to show you the lift that we actually achieved by installing this long arm lift kit. Throwing the body on just shows even further how crazy this lift kit is. I'm going to immediately take the wheels and tires back off and try and mount up those new J Concepts Mega Truck wheels and the Fling King tires. Now the J Concepts wheels come with multiple different offsets for the backside to adjust the width. Now, I'm not trying to go crazy and go with the widest one. I'm actually going to keep this more reasonable and I'm gonna go with the 18 millimeter offset. That brings the back of the hub basically to the edge of the wheel, trying to keep scrub steer in check. Something that I often see people do is try and just throw a really wide setup on or wheel wideners, things like that. That is terrible on scrub steer, super hard on servos. You really need to look into how things like that affect the rest of your truck. Wheel wideners or huge offset hubs, things like that are just a big hindrance to the performance of the steering in your truck. Now with those tires mounted on, the lift kit looks appropriate. Now I will say that I mounted these tires up to this truck in completely stock form just to see how much they interfered. But with the lift kit, I can get basically complete compression front and rear without really any interferences. If I have any, it might just be some minor trimming. So the last thing I have to do now is bolt up the new painted centers to these wheels that I've got drying outside. I painted these Lexan center caps with some Tamiya metallic blue and backed them with black just to try and get somewhat close to the color of the stock TRX4 Sport body. So at the end of the night, ended up with my TRX4 Sport mega truck. The lift kit is a well-engineered piece. The quality of everything is pretty decent, it feels. It's just not something I would normally use I wanted to try it though. I wanted to see how they put the kit together, what they did, how everything felt, just so that I could have some sort of reasonable opinion on it. But at the same time, I couldn't figure out anything that I would really want to use a lift kit on other than something like I've got here. So that's the direction that I went. Now I do have plans for a big brushless system in this thing to have a little bit of fun with. I do truly hate mud, really do. I don't know why I ever build mud trucks. In reality, I love the style of them. Mega trucks are amazing machines and the people that drive them do insane things. So the RC versions, I'm kind of drawn to them in some ways. 
That doesn't make me hate mud or cleaning mud any less though. But I promise that I will hit the mud with this thing and I will shoot video of it. And hopefully I can find a place to do that fairly soon. Once my brushless system comes in, we'll get that installed in here first, do a little bit of testing on the gearing, see how I like the speed. And then once that's all wrapped up, that's when I'll finally take this thing out and see what it can do. But until then, thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're not already, and see you on the next one.